Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency meeting for March 8th. It's good to see you all. Let's do a quick round of introductions from the board and then the staff, and then we can uh, jump into our agenda approval. Uh, so I'm Jim Cooper from the city of Olympia. Uh, Joan? Uh, Joan Cathy from the city of Tumwater. Greg? Greg Brotherton, vice chair and, and uh, Jefferson County Commissioner. Randy. Randy Nevelin, Mason County Commission. Robin. Robin Vasquez, Lacey City Council. Mike. Mike Schultz. Oh, I was going Mike French because I'm going. That's what I thought. <laughs> but I thought, okay, I'm not hearing anything. So maybe you've already, you're just going in order. Sorry about you that. You kept guys. me from having dead air though. Thank you, Mike. Well, that's, uh, yeah. Hey, I, I'm, I'm here. Sorry. Hearing, uh, I'm here. Sorry. I'm Mike French from Clallam County. Yes. Cool. Carolina. Carolina Mejia, Thurston County. Jill. Morning, Jill Warney, Grace Harbor County. Robin. You called me already. Oh, I did. Here I, just I am like again. <laughs> you moved <laughs> to the bottom of the list and I can't keep track. So, okay. Did I miss any board members? Okay, Jeff, walk us through the staff team, please. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Johnston. I work as executive director. I'm here with Mike Schultz, compliance supervisor, uh, Mark Gooden, engineering manager, Odell Hadley, a senior air monitoring specialist, Dan Nelson, our communications manager, Lynn Harding, financial services manager, um, and Rob Weiland, uh, air quality specialist. And I'll just note, in case anybody hasn't noticed that Debbie Moody is not here. Uh, so Debbie and Robert are actually on vacation this week. Before she left last week, Debbie mentioned that she thought this was the fourth board meeting in over 30 years that wow. she will have missed. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, she's off on a much deserved vacation this week. Um, and Tiffany Flores, records clerk, will probably be joining us a little after 11. Uh, Debbie had asked her to help with notes, but she had a conflict first thing this morning. So you might see Tiffany pop on a little bit later. Other Jeff and Mike. Uh, Jeff Myers, legal counsel. Mike Throckmorton, also legal counsel. Great. Welcome, and, everyone. And one more. And Matthew Sonneby, also legal counsel. Thank you, Matthew. Sorry, I, I missed that. Wonderful. I like that uniform for lawyers better. I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to uh, actually one uh, just note from the chair. I have to leave for a work obligation for an 11 o'clock meeting. So I'm going to leave just a couple minutes before 11 and Greg will take over and finish out the meeting with you all. Um, with that, is there a move, motion to approve the agenda? So moved. A second. second. Okay. Second. A, mo a motion and a second. Any amendments or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great. So I'll take us to chair report and we'll go to Greg for a quick finance report. Yeah, I know we've got lots to talk about, so I'll be pretty quick. We had a, a joint personnel finance uh, committee meeting and we went over the, uh, the, the market salary, the market study that we've been uh, um, going through. And uh, we made a couple of kind of different scale recommendations to, to Lynn and Jeff to bring back some uh, concrete recommendations and budget budgetary impacts that we will review and bring a recommendation back to the full board in the April meeting. Okay, any questions for Greg? I just wanna say thanks to the personnel and finance committee for the extra meetings going through this. I know it's been a little out of the ordinary, so thank you. Okay, that takes us to public comment. Any public comment that we know of, Dan or Jeff? I'm not aware of any. I don't see anybody in the queue. Okay, great. So that takes us to our consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I would move approval of the consent agenda. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions, comments, or polls? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to an executive session. 
Um, and we have a new script on our agenda. Thanks to Debbie and Jeff and Jeff for keeping us um, in line with what the state auditor expects. Uh, the board will now meet in executive session for 30 minutes to discuss the executive director performance evaluation and contract as allowed by <coughs> RCW 42.3.110G. The board will be in executive session until 1036, at which time the regular session will reconvene. The board is expected to take further actions following the executive session. Everybody okay with that? All right, so I'll ask Dan to move everyone into uh, the waiting room and then the board will likely bring Jeff back out of the waiting room prior to the end of the executive session. And do you want the three attorneys to remain? Uh, we do not need the attorneys. Okay, so stand by. We'll see you at 1036. Okay. And I'll just ask, um, Greg, can you kind of help me with timekeeping so that we like give me a five minute at least so we don't run over and I'll try, but I'll try to watch it as well. Will do. Okay, let me find. Dan's moving everyone. Think. And Jeff, you want in as well for now? No, Jeff can go to the waiting room now and we'll bring him back. Okay, bring right. Him yeah. I'll yeah, bring yeah. him in a little bit. Okay. So I think, oh, there's Rob. Get rid of him. It's just you left. Is that right? Yeah. So let me make you host and you can shut me down. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, this is the continuation of the March 8th executive session, uh, or sorry, March 8th Olympic Region Clean Air Agency meeting. Uh, the board is coming out of executive session discussing the executive director's performance out evaluation, as was stated prior, uh, and we ended on time. So nice job and thank you, everyone. There's no action to be taken, though. And there's no action coming out of executive session. Thank you for that clarification. And that will take us to new business, which is to review the 2023 ORCA board work plan. And um, so what I, I, I wanna say what, I, just real quick before we hand this to Jeff, what him and I talked about is having him bring us a work plan instead of another set of performance measures for his role. Um, they were very similar. Um, this will be the monthly, you know, look at the meetings, but what him and I are talking about is bringing those two components together and, and, and deciding what the right word is for each so that we don't have um, too many pieces that we're, we're really evaluating him on. So I realized I turned that into a little bit of a fumble, Jeff, but hopefully it made sense for everyone and I'll hand it over to you. Okay, great. Yeah, you I, I me mean, confused there for a second, but I think so. The purpose of this I was conversation, confused before and I forgot that you straightened me out already. <laughs> all right. So the, the purpose of the conversation today, and let me share my screen. Let me try to see if I can share a document here. Uh, get the right one. Um, okay, so hopefully everybody is now seeing uh, what I have been calling a work plan, but actually through this conversation that Jim and I had, actually I think should change, call it maybe ORCA agenda planner or something to clarify that it's not really a work plan. It's just basically simply showing what's coming up on future agendas. And I put this again, this is one of the first things I did in assuming my role, just to help me see what, what's coming in coming board meetings. And I think it's been helpful for us it, with the staff, but hopefully it's maybe helpful for you as well. And so I just wanted to take a quick look at it today. And again, just continually uh, make the offer that if there's things that you as board members want to see on the agenda, additional, you want a deeper dive into some of the work that ORCA does, please let us know. Um, and we'll keep this document up to date. Again, what it has on there is, of course, here we are at March, um, uh, reviewing the work plan next month. Uh, it's in, in April, according to the, uh, I mean, we do our annual meeting of the board. We'll do third quarter update and so on. One of the things I'll also mention here in May of working with Odell on putting together 
a uh, little bit of, of, we call it Ozone 101, but oh, May is officially the start of the ozone season. So thought that that might be a, a good opportunity just to provide a little bit of background to all of you in what is ozone as a pollutant? Why do we measure it? When do we measure it? That kind of thing. So we're planning on doing that. Um, and then I'll just mention then on the second page, it just has a kind of a placeholder for the things that we've talked about as a board that uh, perhaps there's some interest in, but we haven't yet slotted to a particular month. And so, um, again, if you have particular thoughts or there's, a, a, again, additional agenda items that you would like to see us um, putting on, on the agenda for coming meetings, please reach out and let me know and know that this document exists and, and Debbie typically uh, has it linked to the agenda for easy access. So um, that's what I had to say about that. Um, are there any sort of questions or suggestions? Thoughts for Jeff? Keep moving forward. Okay. Okay. Don't see any hands, sir. Okay. One thing that's kind of tied into this that maybe I'll bring up now is that um, the, the issue of of in person versus hybrid versus virtual. So, th so this month we're all virtual. There's nobody in the conference room. And uh, whereas the past couple of months there have been at least a few people in the conference room. Um, which again, we're happy to do. And of course the conference room is always open to the public to, to join us. We have certainly, we're ready for that today and we'll always be ready for that. Um, so I uh, just wanted to hear, I mean, again, at some point, uh, it's, uh, Jim and I have talked a little bit about pulling the board together for an in-person event, because again, there is a benefit to being together in person. Randy, it was great to meet you last month when you came in, in person. But I also know that there's a lot of benefits to doing these remotely. A lot of you have a long way to travel and it just makes it easier, more seamless to go from meeting to meeting. But it's also helpful for us to know in advance. So if you do plan, so I guess, I think the default will largely be to do this remote unless there's something particular on the agenda that we want to do in person. But again, let me know, let Debbie know um, in advance. Let us know as we're planning the meetings or if you're planning on being here in person just so that we can plan for it. But um, again, unless there's something specific on the agenda that is warrants, that warrants an in-person meeting, I think our default will be to do what we're doing today if that works for everybody. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been arguing for at least the hybrid option since I got there. It is a long drive and it feels a little weird to get in my car and drive down for my clean air meeting uh, for two hours. But um, and then I've also, of course, we've all managed started to make uh, meetings butted right up against other meetings. I think there's a lot of value in getting together. But my my I guess my real concern is my understanding of the updated OPMA uh, law is that if we had in-person meetings before, and we very explicitly did, then we always need to at least offer a hybrid option for the public. That doesn't mean we can't do exactly what we're doing today, but if someone walks in, you need That's to be able to today, provide then. access to the to the meeting like anyone else. Absolutely. Yeah, we were ready. The, co the computer was running in there. We were ready if any members of the public showed up. And because I was debating, okay, well, if the public shows up, do I do it from my office? Do I do it from the conference room? So we'll definitely be ready if, if members of the public do. Um, and that means go. posting it as hybrid, even if we're all virtual. Yeah. And, I, and I would love to, right. to really kind of schedule somewhere we focus on all coming down there. So in favor of being down there at least a couple times a year with you guys. So go Randy and then Robin. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, I was pretty sure that our chair asked for us to be there, so I drove down there specifically to support the chair's request. <laughs> but apparently, I'm the only one that that thought that that request existed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I I gave an out in my request because I don't. I mean, to Greg's point, where are the clean air agencies? <laughs> so go ahead, Robin. I was just gonna say I I also came down for the meeting two meetings ago for similar reasons that Jim said, it'd be nice to have some other board members actually in the, in the room. So I drove over, but um, I think the OPMA does allow a board to decide to continue fully remote if there are challenges to health or safety that we're continuing to keep an eye on. But right now it doesn't, you know, I think that those risks from a public health perspective are diminishing. So I, 
in my day job, I navigate some of the OPMA challenges for the state agency I work for. And we have begun offering in public access again, where we had not during the public health emergency. So we're opening back up. So is getting in an automobile a health and safety concern that could keep us fully remote, Jeff? We have not treated it as such. I, don't, <laughs> I think you'd have a hard time making that argument with a straight face. <laughs> right okay. Uh, well, so I think that that's a good conversation. And honestly, um, I think I've done three or four now back in the room. And with the way the owl is set up with the screen so far from the dais, I have a lot of trouble. Um, so I, I lean towards this facilitation until we can figure out a different screen set up in there. Um, and and but I would like to recommend and and just see if if what people think is that in June or September, and I'm gonna I'm saying that because I'm actually not gonna be here for July and August. I'm taking a sabbatical for work and not gonna be available at least one one time this summer, but you usually take the other one off. But, but in June or September that we come together and June makes sense to me because it's our budget and we have a budget conversation mm -hmm. and then turn around and have lunch with our tenants and our board and our staff and celebrate paying off our building. And to me, that feels like a really good time. Come together in June, go out in the Fran McNair picnic area, you know, light the barbecue, uh, have a recreational fire. I don't know, not really, but 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 really have have some have some burgers or sandwiches and and just celebrate and and have some fellowship together. If, if folks would be interested in something like that, Randy, I absolutely think we should do it at least once a year, if not twice a year. Uh, we still got to meet each other. Uh, there's some members on here I've never mm -hmm. actually even met before, right. and I want to remind you, uh, they actually used to feed you when you went to these meetings. Um, now, not like another organization, I won't mention that actually supplied r restaurant <laughs> food that I'm looking at them saying, I don't want to give you any more money because we got steak and everything else at these <laughs> meetings. Uh, but they do usually supply a nice little thing of some desserts and some uh, finger foods and stuff. And uh, it's nice to break bread with friends and get to know each other. Totally. Okay. Robin? I was just going to offer that the Thurston Regional Planning Council has started doing kind of an every other meeting where Typically, we're all remote for the meeting one month, and then the next month, folks are encouraged to show up so that we've got kind of an every other month cadence. So I also like the idea of all of us trying to get together at least once during the year and like intentionally planning to be in person. Okay. So hearing no pushback, we'll look at maybe June as a as a possibility to get everybody together and uh, celebrate and 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 burn the deed if we can. I don't know if the county will really give us one or how that works in in a in a government relationship. But don't really um, burn it, just symbolically. There you go. Well, well, and we need the the zero emission. Uh, we need to get Mark engineering that. <laughs> how about shredding it? We'll just shred it. How about shred that? it. There you go. That's perfect. Shred it with a solar panel. Okay. <laughs> Jim, All right. One, one other thing. One other thing I think uh, you want to consider is the June meeting is also your public hearing on the budget. So to the extent you have public hearings that I would anticipate actually having the public uh, be very interested in, that's probably the primary one that you have. So I think that's a perfect fit um, because having a public hearing with people in attendance, I think, is more effective. Um, uh, and, and a better experience for the public who wants to come in and, and comment. Cool, that's that's great. And, and to that end, so everybody has to bring one other person in their car from their community so they can hear about what we do. <laughs> okay, anything else on that conversation? Great, okay, so we'll look forward to getting something together and otherwise uh, stay in the hybrid environment uh, into, unless it warrants getting people together. Like things like a, an evaluation makes sense to me too as we go along. Yeah. So. Great, okay, thank so you. Thanks. Anything else on that, Jeff? Nope, that's it. Okay, wonderful. So that takes us to um, the the compliance report with Mike, and I'm just going to go ahead at this point and hand the meeting over to Greg. I'll listen to part of Mike's presentation uh, and then see you all next month. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Chair. All right. Well, I. I Take it away, Mike Schultz, with the compliance update. 
Okay, well, you guys have all have the compliance uh, uh, information, the sheets that we print out there in the packet. Um, I'm not going to read them all verbatim or anything, and I'll just give a couple highlights real quick and we'll move along. Um, first, start out with the compliance staff is doing a great job with the inspections. Uh, our inspections have picked up from the previous month, and you'll see that continuing um, for the next uh, several months as we get spring and summer weather gets better, uh, things like that. Uh, so picking up on the inspections. It also must be close to spring, even though it doesn't feel like it because uh, people must be remodeling. Our demos and asbestos have ticked up. Uh, we got more notifications there. Good thing is that people are notifying us and it's a good, you know, and I'm assuming people are doing, starting to tear things apart so they can remodel. Um, those numbers have ticked up this last month. And then the last thing is this month of March, um, it's definitely the month that we do um, annually some certifications for the compliance staff. Uh, one is the HAZWOPER, which is the Hazardous Waste Material Training. Um, some engineers and compliance have are doing that this month to get certified. We have to have that for our inspections uh, before, before we go out. And, um, so we get recertified there. And the other recertification for the compliance staff that we're doing um, actually next week is all the compliance staff will be recertified um, in what we call smoke school. It's really smoke, uh, our opacity certification where we get certified to read smoke and know how thick it is. Um, and we can go out there and make a 5%, within 5%, uh, a uh, guess on whether you're anywhere from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. So we'll be doing that. So a lot more training this month, um, yearly certifications for the staff, and then they've been doing a great job uh, as numbers are picking up as we get into spring and summer. That's it. And I'm here to answer any questions people may have. Questions for Mike. Well, I have one or two. One, I was just, I wasn't sure what the, uh, some of them are, most of them are full compliance evaluations and there were a few investigations. Can you differentiate those terms for me a little more clearly? Yes, the, the full compliance inspection is our typical inspection. We're going out there yearly or, or every couple of years, we're gonna do the whole inspection. If we have um, an issue that a separate and apart from the evaluation um, that maybe it's a complaint maybe it's we uh, during the inspection we found a problem we'll go back and do some investigation some a lot of times that investigation is centered around um, potential violations so we separate that out as much as we can from the um, from the inspection because we've done our inspection we know you've hit marks a b and c you didn't hurt, hit you know DEF, whatever, and then we do investigation to find out, you know, uh, the scenario around it, or again, could be a, a complaint driven, we're going to do an investigation, not a true inspection. I mean, is it usually complaint driven? What would be another um, input? It, 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 for um, facilities that we are have registered, it's usually going to be a finding that we have while we inspect. And instead of going back out and calling it another full compliance inspection, because we're not doing that, we'll call it investigating whether or not, and sometimes it's from the office, it's investigating the, the reports, have they submitted what they were supposed to submit. So we've already done our compliance, um, uh, full compliance evaluation. Now we're doing an investigation. And it's generally, um, not always, but generally going towards some deviations of the inspection. And then we're going to do further investigation, but we're going to wrap up the, the report. Does that help clear it up? Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero percent opacity. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Very good. I do want to go to smoke school myself. I have one other question about that. That's just, are there uh, machines or meters or an app for your phone that can also do that? Is this uh, like there? There, unfortunately, there's not. There's for several years. There's been a um, a uh, company trying to establish a a software program that when you take pictures from a camera you can download it with the software and um and then um it will read the opacity the problem with that is it's got to have the lighting a certain way you got to still spend time and money calibrating your um your software camera so most of the air districts do not do that um i'm not even 100 percent sure it's approved with epa yet I, I, don't quote me on that it may or may not be but most of the air agencies have not gone that route because it's not tried and true yet and it's very expensive that software they're charging a bunch of money. So we go out twice a year. Um, uh, there's two companies that do it. The company we use is the um, is ran by the um, Yakima Clean Air Agency. 
been doing it for years. And so we go out there and they actually have a machine where they spit out smoke in the back of a trailer uh, and they can, and they got an opacity meter in the stack and they can give us two kinds, white smoke and black smoke and anywhere from 0%, which of course is nothing, but all the way up to hundred percent. And we got a test and you, you've got to pass it with a certain standard deviation. That way, if we go to a uh, hearings board on anything, we can actually, or a facility is, is too thick. We can actually then say, no, nah, you were 30%, not 10% you know, that's a problem. And, uh, and we require some of our sources to do that certification too. So if we require them to do it, we can't really tell them they're off if we don't have it also. So, but yeah, that is a machine there where they actually can read it and do it. But, um, uh, and people get uh, wonder sometimes we do it at the fairgrounds out here in Thurston County, why it's, um, uh, you know, why is the black smoke coming from the fairgrounds, but it's, it's half a day, you know, twice a year. So. Great. Thanks for digging into that. Mm -hmm. um, good job. Any other questions for Mike? Okay. Can I ask one really quick? Go ahead, Mike. Um, so I missed the last board meeting. I don't know if there's this was reported last month, but I was curious if there was any uh, update on the McKinley Mill in Port Angeles. They were having problems with mercury. I was just curious if. Yeah. If um, well, they they've installed a um, temporary unit to control the mercury. I think that might have been expressed uh, during the last meeting. Um, that uh, equipment is going to be transferred to a permanent one. Um, we're still working on the violation part of it as far as the um, the uh, assessments. That hasn't been resolved. But they actually, um, next week in April, I'm going up there for a few days. They've got a, a stack test. They'll be testing, among other things, the mercury and particulate testing and SO2, a whole bunch of stuff. And along that pack, so, I mean, along with that, the mercury with their new pack system hopefully installed. If the new one's not installed, it will be the temporary one they're using. So we'll get some more numbers in April or they, and they may not come till May. It's usually 30, 45 days later, we get the results, but yeah. So, so we're moving forward, hoping that the, what they call the pack system, that's the uh, activated carbon system will continue to pass the, the testing in November passed. So we're hoping it's going to continue to pass. Um, um, so that part we're hoping they've got a handle on it. We'll know more in April. Uh, it's like the 20, first 22nd so late april when they're testing um so and then as far as the past violations that's still in the process of ongoing uh, negotiations great thanks glad that they're you know working with you yep great great thanks for that commissioner okay seeing no other questions we'll move on to mark who i saw i don't know if you can turn your camera on mark but we'd love to hear the engineering update from you good morning Hey Dan, can I uh, sh sh can I share my screen? You may, yes. Uh, not working. <laughs> Could be the, the green button down at the bottom. Yep. Yep. I pressed it. Oh, window. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Sure. Okay. Can you all see that? <clears throat> Great. Okay. So this brings us to our industrial commercial air permits section. <clears throat> and the first thing I'd like to say is that this list is pretty short. And so Jeff wanted me to point out that we have a lull in, uh, in permit applications coming through the door. I don't know quite why that is. We've experienced peaks and valleys in the past, and there's plenty of work to do in those valleys. So we've been keeping busy, but we do have a short list. And so the, uh, there's, you're only gonna see two pages here. And just to dovetail in on Mike's response to the question regarding McKinley, part of the compliance effort is actually approving this PAC system, which stands for powdered activated carbon system that they have proposed. And so like Mike said, that they have a temporary powdered activated carbon system on the uh, exhaust of the boiler. And they will put, they will soon transition to a permanent powdered activated carbon system. We're still in the process of reviewing uh, the, their application to install this by state law, there's a 
a notice of construction is required before you replace or substantially alter or you install a new air pollution control system. So this is a, a statewide permit requirement. They're, they're still in the process. We're hashing out details like what, what monitoring conditions do they need to abide by to assure that they're complying with the mercury standard in the long run. So that's the only one I'd like to point out on, on the list here. It's showing up here on the second page, McKinley. As always, if you have any questions regarding these, uh, let me know. You could give Jeff a call and work through Jeff or give me a call or an email directly. The other thing that I wanted to mention today is part of some of the other work that the engineer permit writers here do. We've been working with the, uh, we have worked to update our recommendations for the cannabis industry. And so we put together this content that that summarizes what work is recommended, air pollution mitigation measures are for the cannabis industry. We updated it since we last developed this. We've had a couple of uh, pollution control hearings board cases that, that have changed the landscape. And so we had to update these mitigation measures. We did this in response to a request from the count, uh, Grace Harbor County Building and Planning Department, their director, they, Grace Harbor County is adopting rules for the cannabis industry and they want to simply refer the details on the what's what's best practices for for exhausting and filtering emissions from a cannabis industry building to uh, the work of recommendations. So we updated these, these uh, recommended measures, got the content over to Dan, who put it in this very nice focus sheet. And now it is on our, <clears throat> our website, so it's available. It can be referred to by cities and counties. If how you get there is uh, if you click from the main menu for business, business assistance, scroll on down, we have assistance focus sheets on a few industries here, including cannabis cultivation and processing. You could view it here or you could download it. So that's one of the side, side projects we've worked on this month. And Dan put a link to that uh, to that page in the chat if anybody's interested. But again, yeah, yeah. So sorry, Mark, didn't mean to inter interrupt. No worries. So that that's it for for my uh, for my report. And uh, let me know if if you have any questions now, or we can handle questions after the meeting as well. So thank you. Well, one thing just just to clarify on cannabis, so ORCA does not register or require permitting for these facilities. This is more just clarifying what the best practices are, um, and because that's a question that we get, and as, as the as the focus sheet discusses, we get pulled in where, where there are odor complaints or other odor issues, but but these are not registered sources with us. So we've so that that was kind of why we produced this. Uh, focus sheet just to clarify um, our recommendations. Just to, since, we, especially since we were getting some questions from Grays Harbor County as they were uh, update, uh, updating their uh, their code around these things. Yeah, th th that's a key point. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, but that is a key point, and in another one too is what we're recommending for buildings is granular activated carbon filtration or something equivalent. So if uh, you refer cases to us, we would start out by sending this focus sheet and we might also uh, have the, the, the time 
to work with the project proponent on, on uh, meeting those general best management practices. Thank you, Mark. Questions for Mark? Well, I always have questions. Everyone likes to get asked questions, right? And one comment, just it, it can be a nightmare, the producing and processing, especially don't, my, my advice to my peers is don't let it be a conditional use permit because while light and sound are not really uh, evaluated, you know, monitor managed by anything, any group, um, you just have the same, <laughs> you just, it's constantly uh, litigated basically. And it's really unpleasant. Um, my question for you though, Mark, is uh, how does one emit into the air isopropyl alcohol and the Pepsi uh, thing in there? I just didn't understand how right. isopropyl alcohol could be an air pollutant. Correct. Yeah. Oh, it is. Um, it is an air pollutant. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of those pollutants that shows up quite a bit. It's used by Pepsi in their cleaning and it shows up in the Washington Administrative Code 173-460, which is the Washington Air Toxics Regulation. And it's got its acceptable level stated there in that regulation. So it's one of those pollutants that shows up quite a bit because it's it's so it's used so so much and its toxic toxicity is pretty low. It's an acutely toxic chemical. So it, it's not a carcinogen. So it's it shows up with a uh, hourly hourly limit. Um, so that that's why it, it is it surprisingly on there. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Any other questions for Mark? Okay, seeing none, we will go on to Odell and the uh, air monitoring report. Thank you, Mark. Okay, can you hear me? Awesome. I'm using a computer today, so I was hoping for no technical difficulties. Okay. All right, and can you see the screen? Okay, perfect. All right, so short February uh, month and a short monitoring report. So that's um, good, I think. So our usual summary, uh, mostly good air quality days in February. We had uh, one moderate day in Port Angeles and two in Shelton. You'll also see that we are missing quite a bit of data at Chica Peak and some data um, in Lacey, Port Angeles, and all the data in Raymond. Um, so I may have mentioned last month that the modem for Raymond, which was a 3G, very old modem, was no longer supported by um, the cellular network and we had to upgrade to 5G. Um, which we did and we got that and Chris uh, is our amazing IT guy set that all up and we drove out there yesterday um, to install it. There were some delays in getting our uh, our account settings correct. We had to have a machine to machine account setting. And um, when we got out there, uh, the cable that was connecting the very old data logger to the modem was no longer, it, it, it didn't fit with the new modem, It's it's that old. So it is in our budget for next year to upgrade that site to a modern data logger. I just want to mention that the data logger we have out there running is from the 80s. And I mentioned to Chris that it may be the only one still in operation in the world. I wouldn't be surprised. So um, <laughs> so it's time to update that. And, and before we get that um, for next year, Chris has ordered a conversion cable that hopefully will allow our very, very modern modem to talk to our very, very, very old data logger. Um, fingers crossed that that happens. If not, we may have to bump up the um, upgrade in Raymond to more uh, to more quickly than next month. So um, a couple other issues, Chica Peak, uh, we did have some issues with the pump um, and some hose that hosing that got disconnected. And then of course with snow, there were delays getting up there to fix that. The Port Angeles nephilometer went a little bit nuts um, last month and required actually a few trips up there to get lamps replaced. 
we replaced the lamp, it died again, and we ended up having to go up and replace the whole analyzer, um, swap that out. So that was that was a fun couple of days getting up to, to Port Angeles. So not a great month for data completion all around, but we're doing our best. Uh, the saturation study in Grays Harbor continue. We continue to collect data at many, many sites. I don't know those of you that have been on the board for a while will remember that. When we started these saturation studies, we were uh, collecting data at four additional sites. That was what we could afford with the, um, the optical particle counters we had bought uh, 10 years ago. So now we have changed our way of doing things and we're uh, crowdsourcing with the available purple air monitors. Um, we have supplemented with three of our own. We have one installed at Aberdeen, uh, co-located with our, our current monitor. We also have one at the Aberdeen School District shop, uh, and that is in West Aberdeen um, near Cosmopolis. And then we have one uh, installed at Central Park Elementary that is a test case for solar powered um, uh, sensors. So we have found that and there are a couple months where when that one struggles to keep up, there's just not enough sun to keep it powered, but otherwise has been doing pretty well and then starting in February has really come back online and is is giving us a lot of data. So um, these other uh, sites are are publicly owned purple air sensors. And so you can see that we're actually getting quite a lot of data from across Grays Harbor and, and really changing how those saturation studies look. Um, and and we'll be able to do the same moving forward at our other uh, in our other counties. So in other monitoring news, I mentioned the multiple site visits to Port Angeles. Oh yeah, the hot water tank issues, that was fun. The, the fire station had a hot water uh, leak that sprayed a little bit of water on some of our equipment. Didn't, <clears throat> at least we didn't think it make it stop working, but, but it, we can't rule out that it played a role in some of the issues that we had. Um, we got that fixed. A couple other site visits. One thing I want to point out, we've started work, I've started working with Shelter One to design the new trailer for Chica Peak. Really excited about how that is looking. Um, and then uh, last week we released the request for proposals for the site improvement work. So that is posted on our website. If you're interested in looking at that, I can send a link. I, I don't have that on here and, and maybe I should have, but um, that's for the, the contract work to remove the old structures and to do some road work and clear some areas for the new trailers and to help us get those trailers uh, up there. So we'll be, um, we'll be accepting uh, proposals until March 30th um, for that work. And then I did do one overnight trip to Chica Peak and assisted the Macaw tribe with their analyzer and did some work up at Chica Peak. And um, that is about it for uh, air monitoring news, unless you have any questions. Oh, I did want to follow up. Uh, Jeff mentioned that uh, I'm putting together an Ozone 101 presentation. I also want to mention that Ozone was <clears throat> Jeff's PhD thesis work, so I'm not quite sure why I'm doing it, but <laughs> he's going to help out with it. Uh, it's easy to forget some of this stuff as the years go by for sure. Um, but I want to say if any of you have, uh, especially newer board members, if you have questions or if there's something about the air quality science that you would like um, explained, I don't have to get into the really nitty science, but I can usually do um, a, an okay job of, of explaining you know, what we're doing and why and, and some of the science behind that. So if any of those topics uh, are of interest to you, please let us know and we will prepare um, something for you. And that is all I have. Thank you so much, Odell. Does anyone have any questions for Odell? I can't wait to see the work on, on Ozone come out and, and it's, it's good to have someone looking over your shoulder as you go through that work, I guess. Yeah, it'll keep me on my toes for sure. <laughs> yeah, can't take anything for granted. All right, great. If there's no questions, we'll we'll pass it on to Dan for the communication update. Okay. So if you've been checking out the chat box on this meeting, you'll notice several links to our new website. Uh, we launched successfully launched our new website a few weeks ago. Uh, had just a few minor hiccups. Uh, it's been very well received. Uh, the major issues we've had, again, were pretty minor. Uh, 
simple things with some of the form integration from user input into our database. Uh, some issues with user errors, since we did uh, reformat forms and actually uh, compressed a few forms, three different asbestos demolition forms into one using some conditional logic and, and selective uh, logic so that people could, as they went through the form, it would select which sections of the form they needed to fill out. So it's basically just a learning process for some of the users to go through that. But uh, other than those very uh, pretty minor hiccups, it's been a, a very successful launch. Um, and we haven't had any uh, negative feedback, a lot of positive feedback uh, so far. So let us know if you see anything. Uh, we do have a bug tracker linked on the bottom of in the footer of every page. So if you do encounter issues with the website itself, uh, that bug tracker is is monitored by both our uh, contractor who we maintain a, a maintenance contract with going forward as well as to us so we can see what's going on and, and make quick fixes. Uh, I did attend the Jefferson County Home Show in Port Townsend on Saturday, a uh, long snowy drive up and back, uh, but it was a great show, a uh, really good uh, response. I think there is close to 700 people attended and 40 plus uh, booths and, and exhibitors. Uh, I've got another one in Port Angeles next weekend, uh, not this coming weekend, but on the 18th uh, and 19th, the Saturday, Sunday up there, and then down in Lacey in April. Uh, we've also been invited to attend the uh, wildfire uh, preparedness and wildfire smoke awareness event in Mason County, uh, hosted by DNR and a couple of the North County fire districts. So uh, people are are starting to host public events again, and so we're going to be out and about in your communities a lot more going forward like we were pre-COVID. So uh, look for us out there, and, and we'll keep you posted on events when we're going to be in your community and hope you can get out there and you're not snowed in like Mr. Brotherton was on Saturday. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so we are also uh, thinking of our, our website contractor uh, just through some informal talks with them and uh, talks over the past 19 years that I've been here with our my colleagues in the air quality world. Um, we are looking at developing a share uh, information sharing service, uh, actually a content and materials sharing and exchange service. Uh, the Rhizome Collaborative, who designed our website, uh, is excited about it and wants to work with us and with the Northwest Air Quality Communicators Group, which is a coalition of myself and my counterparts throughout Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, uh, and essentially share costs to maintain a uh, cloud-based sharing service where we can share social media posts, we can share graphics, photos, of various content elements, videos, uh, and that way we all can increase our social media presences, uh, have a more consistent and concise uh, messaging when we're all talking the, the same language and using the same uh, materials. It, it makes it easier for people to track what's going on uh, from one area to the next. So that's something we're looking at it will have a monetary cost. Uh, the the uh, pilot program probably will be in the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar range, uh, but that's likely to be shared by uh, fifteen to twenty-five agencies. Uh, some will pay significantly more. Uh, Department of Health has been very interested uh, and being a major sponsor, so that they can get their county health departments and the people you work with at the county level. Uh, participating at, at little or no cost. So if the state covers it, they'll they'll make it available to all your county health departments to talk about wildfire smoke and health messaging around those events and around ozone events and anything else that's pertinent. So uh, still very much in the planning phase. Uh, I'm heading up the subcommittee of the Northwest Air Quality Communicators to get that worked out. Uh, we presented to the air directors, Jeff and his counterparts uh, throughout Washington, um, 
earlier this month and and they were very supportive so uh we'll keep you posted but it's an exciting development that should mean a, a lot of smoother and more consistent messaging not just for orca but for us and all of our colleagues so that we're using the same language using the same messages uh, with that in mind we even without the new service we are doing uh consistent and shared uh, messaging on a limited basis. The first will be the week of May 1st through 5th is the National Air Quality Awareness Week. Uh, EPA kind of drives that and there is messaging uh, each day uh, on a specific topic. So we'll be participating with that. And I'll wanna share that with your cities and county uh, communications folks so that they can uh, retweet or, or repost messaging and and i'll make sure that shared uh materials are available to any of your departments that want it uh, and then finally i think jeff will cover this in more detail but we did uh on actually monday of this week i guess the the rule revision for recreational fires that you passed uh back in february or in january went into effect uh with little fanfare uh we we did create some outreach materials teaching people how to be responsible and safe with their recreational slash campfires uh that was actually a, a incredibly well received and popular brochure at the at the show on saturday people were loving that up in jefferson county and so um and we do have uh notice of that and shared all the materials of that on our website too so i'll, I'll share that link here as well Thank you so much, Dan. Questions, comments for Dan? Well, while people phrase their questions, I'll just say that website is just fantastic. What an improvement, both on, I've been putting it through its paces on my phones and different devices, and it it, it migrates great across different devices. And as I said, I think last time, the, the search engine optimization is so <laughs> much better. So yeah, real, real kudos. And I don't remember if I mentioned last time, but the the designers did go through it and checked it, and it's uh, they they shoot for ninety percent uh, accessible content and design, and we're at a hundred percent on a, on every page, and it's available in three languages. Uh, likely to increase that to five, just because we had to up our contract with that service because of the the amount of content we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dan. If there's no other questions, we'll, we'll pass it over to Lynn for the financial update. All right. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see y'all. I actually look very forward to our celebration in June. It's an exciting milestone and uh, the payment of our office building is, is definitely one in itself to celebrate. So uh, so look forward to that and seeing y'all in June. Just a couple things, uh, you know, Jeff's already provided you a uh, update on our uh, the work plan that includes the finance committee meeting in April prior to our board meeting. And also we might have to meet in May too, if needed that, uh, you know, including, uh, because we're gonna be talking about our budget fiscal year 2024. So if April's not, sufficient enough time for the finance we have made to roll into and and then finalize that prior to bringing it to the full board. And we'll also be discussing our third quarter financial report in April for um, our current fiscal year 2023. Uh, at the last board meeting uh, last month, the SAO provided their update on our um, audits. And as you all know, the th all three reports have been published by the state auditor's office. So feel free to retrieve, review, and look. Uh, they no longer send out hard copies or links, uh, you know, on the prevent preventing cybersecurity issues. So feel free to log on to SAO and uh, look at our, our finalized reports. Let's see, ORCA, we are entering a fairly busy time, uh, but when isn't it? We're gonna be working with Ecology, EPA, FSEC on the renewal of a number of our contracts. They're multi-year contracts. With Ecology, we have 
a couple multi-year contracts with the core, the wood stove education, the wood smoke reduction. Uh, we also have a five-year contract with Ecology on our PM 2.5 that doesn't renew until next fiscal year. We just submitted our FSEC two-year proposal that was quickly and uh, accepted and they've already returned a um, completed contract uh, for our next two-year cycle. And the FSEC is the Energy Facility Site um, um, uh, Evaluation Console. So uh, we'll be working with them for another two years. Yeah. And and Lynn, let me just jump in. And so that's for working with the Grace Harbor Energy Facility. That's so Grace Harbor Energy Facility in uh, in Satsup is a uh, FSEC facility. So we contract with FSEC to on the permitting and the operation of that facility. Correct. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, that's a natural gas fired electric generation facility. So I've been working with them since about 2007, providing engineering compliance services. And uh, the last thing, at the end of February, we received notice from Association of Washington Cities that we were awarded again, the Well City Award, which provides each Well City recipient with a 2% premium reduction on our medical premiums. You know, the reduced cost, you know, decreases sick days, disability, healthcare claims, and of course, workers' comp uh, claims as well. And part of my job is coordinating as wellness coordinator with our wellness committee. We now have Aaron Manley and Tiffany Flores as part of the committee. And I just wanted to share this with the board. We have a vision and we have a mission. Health, mental health, uh, it's important. Uh, we're all facing some struggles or some competition with the external world out there. And we want to try to bring goodness and healthy behaviors and mental um, health and improvements and to ORCA and for our staff. But the ORCA's vision for our wellness is providing employees options for improved greater health. And our mission is to motivate and build healthier lifestyles through education, activities, and action. So we have a great group to work with, and we have a lot of tools and resources that AWC provides along with their um, health benefit trust. So we definitely tap into those resources, and we definitely make sure that employees know that there's options for them out there. So it's an important piece that employees know that they have. And But... That's all I have to report for you, unless uh, there's any questions from y'all. Thanks for your time. No questions for Lynn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Going once, going twice. No, okay. Uh, on to Jeff, the executive director report. Okay, well, thanks, Greg. Thanks everybody. So just a few things to update you on. Uh, so as, as Dan mentioned a few minutes ago, our the rule change removing the ban on recreational fires in Lacey Olympian Tumwater did become effective this past Monday. Uh, so Dan posted some information about that last week uh, 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 with and just information about um, the, the the change. Um, the, the the information was included in the brochure that you all provided some some input on that we looked at last month. So thank you for that input. We incorporated a lot of that and. Uh, Again, as, as Dan mentioned, it was a pretty uh, non-eventful launch. Haven't heard anything. Um, I think there was it was good to have this rule change become effective, um, not in the high uh, campfire burning season, perhaps. But so that all went well. We did also, because again, so in addition to the, 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 the folks that testified at the hearing in January, we did have the 21 people who submitted email uh, comments that you that you all reviewed. Uh, so we sent them uh, an email that we had completed this action and included a link to the website where the um, our response to comments uh, uh, was posted. So again, good to have that work behind us. Um, any questions about that before I move on? Not seeing any. 
Um, so just a quick sort of legislative update um, today for those who have been following the ledge session. Of course, today is the last day to pass bills out of the House of Origin. So many bills will, many proposals will die at 5 p.m. today unless they're considered necessary to implement the budget. And that's a pretty big loophole, but a lot of things will die at the end of today. The one thing that I've been tracking pretty closely this session that has most directed, most uh, cl closely related to our work is um, substitute House Bill 1554 about reducing public health and environmental impacts from lead. So as you probably are aware, um, lead was removed from most gasoline decades ago, but it has remained uh, in aviation fuel for piston engines. And so um, exposure from general aviation actually accounts for, I think I saw a statistic, 70% of the general exposure to lead these days. And so while EPA and FAA are working to reduce or eliminate lead in aviation fuel, it's a long process. So some uh, Washington legislators have been interested in speeding up that process and reducing exposure where they can. And so there was there's a piece of legislation, as I said, uh, House Bill 1554, that requires Department of Transportation working with Ecology and Department of Health to come up with guidance for airports on how they can reduce lead exposure, such as changing run-up areas, uh, a variety of other things. And then those reports are do are um, required to be submitted to local air agencies for review and evaluation, not DOT or not these other agencies, but to local airs. So I was, and again, these it's not like like uh, airports are registered. I mean, are re registered sources. We do have some of them are registered if they're if uh, like some uh, paint booths and some other things, but typically we don't just register airfields. So I was pretty concerned about this and it, questions about the implementation and certainly agree with the with the public health uh, concern. But so I reached out and actually last Friday had a conversation with Representative Dolio the, um, from, the, from here in Olympia, Legislative District 22, who's the prime sponsor of the bill. So um, myself and the directors from Puget Sound Clean Air and Southwest Clean Air met with Representative Dolio to express, again, our support for the overall goal of the legislation, but our, our implementation concerns. And she shared that really her primary concern was the top 10 airports. Uh, and again, up to this point, we hadn't seen a list of what airports we're talking about. So it was just a lot of unknowns. Um, actually the top 10 airports, nine of them are in Puget Sound Clean Air's jurisdiction and the 10th are, and one of them is in um, Ecology's jurisdiction. And so I think, so she was gonna make some changes to the legislation clarifying that, um, that other locals such as ORCA are not going to be involved in implementing this legislation. So I haven't had a chance yet to look at see what the updated legislation, what the new language shares. But again, I'm much less concerned about this now after the conversation with Representative Dolio last week. Um, and uh, yeah, any questions about that before I move on? Not seeing any. Um, then I guess the next thing I just wanted to briefly mention, um, folks, there's been a lot of conversation over the past number of months about the Inflation Reduction Act was signed by or passed by Congress and signed by the president last summer. A lot of money uh, coming to for a variety of clean energy, clean air type things. A couple different grants I'll mention. One is Clean Air Act grants. So there is additional monies coming to clean air agencies. A national total of 25 million. Washington is going to be getting uh, 746 million to Ecology. We're still waiting to hear from Ecology how that is going to be distributed to the local air agencies, but we're working closely with them on what we need to do to make sure that we get Orca's fair share of that money. And again, that's going to be in addition to the core grant and some of the other grants that Lynn was just talking about. So once we know more, I can fill you in more on that. Um, there's also, there's been, there's a whole series and uh, quite a bit of money coming out of what's, it's what's called the Climate Pollution Reduction Grants. And so uh, there's a planning phase and there's an implementation phase. Um, states have to submit applications and their intention to, to apply for this money by the end of 
May, I'm sorry, but by the end of March, um, apparently the governor's office has already done this um, and ecology is working with commerce to uh, put a plan together of, but what I'm trying to do is to collect, because I, I know about some efforts going on in local governments around climate that could be good candidates to receive some of this, some of the $3 million that Washington is going to get. For example, I know that that, he, that the Thurston Regional Planning Council is working with uh, the cities of Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, and the county on the Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan. That seems to me like it would be an ideal candidate for funding under this. Um, and I know from a conversation that I had with Bill Peach uh, back about a year ago that Clallam County was working on a, a greenhouse gas inventory. So I guess what I would ask is that if you're aware of of efforts going on in your counties, your your uh, municipalities, your, your cities that that should be on the list that I should be pushing that information to ecology to make sure that they're aware of it, please let me know um, so that our, again, that our, 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 our counties can compete and be considered for this funding. And let me put uh, in the chat, I'll put a, um, a link to the Climate Pollution Reduction Act or Climate Pol Pollution Reduction grants uh, there's a lot of information on the website there's upcoming there's been webinars and things and so let me know again if you if you have entities that might be interested in this um there's also ports the epa is pushing out a lot of money around clean ports and so and i've reached out to gary nelson at ports port of grays harbor as well as sam gibney port of olympia to make sure that they're aware and, and tracking some of these things but if there are other ports that you're that you're wanting me to that might be interested in some of these efforts uh let me know um and i can do what i can and i'll forward information as it comes across my desk to um whoops that i was trying to put the link in there so um, and then lastly, last update is at last week's air directors meeting, Ecology provided an update on the work going on to identify um, overburdened communities in Washington that are overburdened by exposure to criteria air pollution. Um, air, air pollutants. Uh, this is an effort as part of the Climate Commitment Act um, that passed the legislature in 2021. And you might have seen there's been in the news past couple of days about uh, cap and invest auction that happened last week uh, to you know raise money for uh, making the transition to cleaner energy. So part three of the Climate Commitment Act requires ecology to identify overburdened communities and reduce exposure to pollution in these communities. So over the past six months, there's been extensive outreach to identify these communities. And then, and so ecology has identified uh, 16 communities. Again, let me put a, um, a, a link in the chat for more information on this and you can see what communities ecology has identified there's actually about um, equal distribution between eastern and western washington um, but no communities within orca's jurisdiction have been identified but the next step for ecology is then to set up to stand up additional monitoring in these communities and try to get a better handle on where some of the pollution in these communities is coming from and then work to reduce that again that exposure so i um, encourage you to take a look at the list of communities um, includes everything from maybe communities that you would have expected such as the lower duwamish uh, south of seattle but also includes communities like ellensburg in central washington and the tri-cities area um, in eastern washington so um, it's kind of interesting to learn a little bit more about that work so I, that's what i had for you today any questions on any of that there's it's been a lot a lot going on yeah, busy. Questions for Jeff? Well, I'll say uh, we we definitely track our greenhouse uh, gas emissions here in Jefferson County. So reach out and I'll, I'll tie you together with our Climate Action Committee. Okay. One other um, effort that we're starting here in Jefferson County using kind of very difficult to use secure rural school title $3 is a community wildfire protection program. 
And I'm just wondering if there is, um, I don't know, partnership between our different groups so we can align, you know, whatever existing uh, um, community wildfire protection programs together, perhaps under this climate, uh, under, under these planning grants and just making, making sure they nest together well. So I'm wondering if that's an opportunity. Possibly, yeah. I know that there's, for instance, I've heard, uh, um, I, I know I know TRPC is also working on, the Thurston Regional Planning Council is also working on some wildfire efforts here in Thurston County. But um, so, yeah, I, um, but in terms of tying those together, that's a good question or thought. I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know to what extent um, those would be, yeah, would considered or, you know, eligible under the greenhouse gas reduction program grants but uh but 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 there's actually there's a lot of effort um around wildfire ready communities um i know that dnr has a big uh, package this session and i haven't followed tracked that in the past couple of weeks so i'm not sure again where that is but i'll, I'll take a look at that um but yeah that that, and that might be kind of another way to tie local you know, the things that are going on in, in separate counties together. And then I just one other comment on, on your report, Jeff, is that as the carbon market matures, I think this would be a, a great table for all of us to learn a little bit more about some of those permutations of, you know, voluntary or regulatory markets as we start to move into them. I think that ORCA does have a, a role in just making sure our policymakers understand the implications of these proposals and laws. Right. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I looked at a list of sources that of of bidders that had bid on the uh, the auction, and uh, there were a few. I think Grace Harbor Energy was certainly on there, but I didn't I didn't comb it for Orca sources. But certainly, it, yeah, it's tracking this and looking at yeah, how does the regulations that they're that these sources are subject to under ecology jurisdiction, others, but how does that connect to and uh, relate to our own regulation of them is an important thing to be looking at, I think, is I agree. Okay, any other questions for Jeff? Okay. Well, seeing none, we're at the at the end of our, our agenda, so I'll call out for anything that anyone has for the good of the order. Okay. Great. Well, it's been a productive meeting. Our next meeting is on April 12th with our, our chair return to, to guide us through it. And with that, I will adjourn this meeting of the uh, Olympic Region Clean Air Agency. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everybody.